Hi, this is Stan Lau with Master Math. During today's lesson, you're going to come across some You Try It pages. When you get there, hit your pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you enjoy yourself. In part one of our lesson on transformations, we focused on translations. And you remember that in a translation, the figure slides to a new location. It doesn't change size. It doesn't change shape. It doesn't turn or twist or rotate. It just slides. Today we're going to talk about two other kinds of transformations. The first is a reflection. And you remember when you look in a mirror, you see a reflection of yourself. If you had an earring in your right ear, in the mirror, the earring would be, it would appear to be in the left ear. When this eagle looks at himself, he sees himself, but it's turned around. And how do we accomplish that? Well, there's an axis around which the image or the figure is going to turn. And you can see that it's not just sliding down to the lower location. I haven't just taken this image and, re and repeated it or duplicated it here. I've turned it over so that it's really upside down. The other kind of transformation we're going to talk about is a rotation. And you remember that a wheel rotates. A wheel rotates around its axis, the middle of the wheel. A clock, the hands on a clock, also rotate and they rotate around the center of the clock. And they don't change size, and they don't change shape. They just rotate around the center of the clock. Well, let's see how some geometric figures change as we reflect them or rotate them. Here's a picture of a triangle. Let's call the, the one on the top the original triangle. And we'll call that the, the reflection of the original triangle. And you'll notice a couple of things. They're both the same size. They're both uh, the same shape, except that the one on the bottom has been uh, turned upside down. They're both the same distance from the x-axis. They're close to the x-axis on one side and further from the x-axis on the other side. So how did we get from the original one to the new one? Well, we need a line of reflection. And in this case, the x-axis is the line of reflection. And then we flip the original triangle over to become the second triangle, or the reflection of it. And we call this line the line of reflection. Now you'll notice something else that's kind of cool. That, the coordinates of that vertex are minus 1,7. Here's the corresponding vertex in the reflection, and its coordinates are minus 1, minus 7. The x-coordinate's the same in both cases. The sign of the y-coordinate, though, has changed. We reflected it around the x-axis, and x stays the same, but y changes its sign. Same is true of that vertex. We went from minus 2, 2 to minus 2, minus 2. And over here we went from 6, 5 to 6, minus 5. So when we reflect the triangle around the x-axis, the x-coordinate is going to stay the same, but the sign of the y-coordinate is going to change. How about if we reflected a figure around the y-axis? This figure has been reflected over here, and it looks like a reflection. This point is still 1, 2 away from the y-axis, and that point is 2 away from the y-axis, except it's on the other side. This point is 4 away from the y-axis, and this point is 4 away from the y-axis on the negative side. So we've flipped it over. And this is our line of reflection. And we flipped it towards the negative numbers. 
Now, what happens with the uh, uh, coordinates of the vertices? Well, in, in this first triangle, that vertex was 4, 6. But when we reflect it around the y-axis, the x-coordinate changes size. The y-coordinate stays the same. The x-coordinate changes size, signs. And that's true of all the vertices. The 5 becomes minus 5, but the 3 stays the same. And the 2 becomes minus 2. The x value changes signs, but the y value changes the same, or stays the same. And that makes some sense, because when we re reflect this across that y axis, uh, this just moves to an equal distance from the y axis, but the same distance above the x axis. But the x value changes because we're moving from the positive x's over to the negative x's. As we go around that y axis, we're going from positive to negative. Or we could go the other direction. Well, now let's talk about rotation. And you know what rotation is rotation is like a tire spinning, or it's like this wheel spinning there's a center point or an axis that it's spinning around. Well the same is true of a geometric figure. I've got a triangle here and I'm going to rotate it around the origin where I put that blue dot. And it's always going to stay the same distance from the origin. But it's going to rotate around in a circular motion 360 degrees around that, that origin point. Well, if I moved it 90 degrees to the right, I'd have a 90 degree arc there, I'd have a 90 degree right angle there, and the figure would be over here. And you'll notice something. All the sides have turned 90 degrees. This side has turned 90 degrees and gone from horizontal to vertical. This side has turned 90 degrees and gone from vertical to horizontal. And the, the hypotenuse has gone 90 degrees, so it's going from left to right instead of right to left. Now when I rotate it another 90 degrees, all the sides rotate another 90 degrees themselves, and this side, which rotated 90 degrees here, rotates another 90 degrees, so now it's rotated 180 degrees, and it's back on line with the original one. And when we rotate it again, it goes to the fourth or the third quadrant, and all the sides rotate, but the vertices are still the same distance from the center. Well, now let's let you try one. Find the new coordinates a prime, b prime, and c prime after reflecting this figure in the x axis. And the figure is the a vertex is 5, 6, the b vertex is minus 3, 2, and the c vertex is 4, 4. Hit your pause button, see if you can work this one out, and then hit your forward key and we'll move on to the answer. Did you get it? I hope so. If we reflect a figure in the x-axis, the sign of the y-coordinates will change. If they were positive, they'll become negative. And we are reflecting this in the x-axis. So the signs of the y-coordinates are going to reverse. For instance, our first point was 5, 6. And when we reflect it, the 5 doesn't change, but the 6 becomes negative 6. And the same is true of the B point. Minus 3 stays at minus 3, but when we reflect it, 2 becomes minus 2. And 4, 4 becomes 4, minus 4. And when we diagram this, it looks like a reflection. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer.
Reflect these letters. Did you get this one? Well, you remember when we reflect a letter, we reflect it around a line of reflection. And there's our line of reflection. Now, theoretically, you could have reflected it around a line that ran over here, but I hope you were clever enough to figure out that if we f reflect it around that line, we're going to uh, get something that means something. And each of these figures, when we reflect it, is going to flip up, flip over, and essentially become upside down. And what's it look like when we turn all these letters upside down and move it the same distance from the line of reflection? Well, it looks like that. The W turned upside down is an M. That picnic table becomes an A. T and the H still looks like an H. Okay, we're asked to reflect this figure in the y-axis. And you remember when we reflect a figure in the y-axis, the y variables or the y coordinates stay exactly the same, but the sign of the x coordinates is changed. When we reflect a figure in the y-axis, the sign of the x coordinates change. And sure enough, when we reflect this, the 3, 6 becomes minus 3, 6. The 5 minus 1 becomes minus 5 minus 1. And the 1, 3 becomes minus 1 minus 3. Okay, to transform figure number one to figure number two, I did two things to it. What were those two things? Well, let's think about it. First, I rotated it. I took this figure and spun it like a wheel. And when you do that, that vertex ends up over there. This vertex goes over there. They're all in the same order, but they're all spun over to that direction. So I rotated it initially. Then I had this figure, and I moved it from there to there. And what's it called when you move a figure without changing its size or its shape? Well, we call that translation. So we translated the figure. So to get from this figure to this figure, I had to rotate it, and then I had to s translate it. Well, that's part two of our lesson on transformations. I hope you understand rotations and reflections and, and translations and can handle the worksheet that you're going to find at www.mastermath.info. And after you've done the worksheet, go back to Master Math and try the quiz on Transformations Part 2. I hope you had a good time. Come back and see us again real soon.